this session will be chaired by our former director, uh, Professor R.K. Mandari. And uh, he will be greeted by our colleagues, uh, Ruchi and Prabhai. Why, are, why am I interested in this phase diagram? 
polyhedra in experimental. You see, this is relativistic ABR collider, large hadron collider. This is the one which is written here. That means these are the accelerators where collide, they collide lead ions or gold ions, that means heavy ions. They collide and create a temperature which is very high, and those temperatures are supposed to take us from a hadronic phase to a quark non quark So, experimentally, we create and characterize this phase going from this phase. And again, it comes back to this phase because ultimately we uh, detect the hadrons. This is one, one option. You go to towards this direction, that is to high temperature. You can go to high density, which is like a neutron star, where uh, which is facility for antiproton ion research where the temperature is not very low like the transfer, but the density is very high. So you can also go to a quark lone plasma or you go to a quark hydrogen phase Now, over the years, all over the world, uh, this kind of activity that means the, if, you, if you call it quote unquote nuclear matter under extreme conditions are being explored experimentally at different places. So if you, if you start saying that yes, it's not like the ECC cyclotron where you break the nucleus and make the compound nucleus, you go a little bit more. It started with around 1984 in Bathley, where the energy was around 2 a GeV. Then of course there are places like Gianna Dukna, then alternating gradient cyclotron in Kutovic National Lab where the energy is like 14.5 a GeV. So from AMB scale we go essentially to GeV scale. And then comes the SPS of uh, superproton synchrotron at Sardinia around 1986 and 202. So this is the one which I have put a little bit of color because that is where experimentally we entered the scene. This is where we, uh, the, even though this is the program which is still going on, because after that there is the uh, GSI uh, which is having again to a GEV, then the realistic EVR collider you see goes to 200 GEV, uh, this is center of mass. The large hadron collider is 5500 GeV and then again come back to lower energy to 30 to 40 GeV. So essentially initially we thought that if we increase the energy we will go from hadronic matter to quark lone plasma matter and it was not very satisfactory. So you go increase, increase, increase and then come back again to a lower energy and try to explain what is happening there. That is how it goes. So let us start from here when we enter the scene. There is an experiment called WA93, WA means West Area and 93 is the experiment number which was going on that time and uh, the beam was sulphur with 200 AGEV, that means 200 GeV per nucleon, that was the beam and it was supposed to hit the target of gold. So the reaction is sulphur and gold which is supposed to create your quark lone plasma or the quark matter. Now this was the kind of setup of this experiment, the fixed target experiment, there is a magnet uh, where there is a target inside and then as soon as the beam hits the target all the particles will come out and you track the particle under the magnetic field, know the momentum and then there is a photon spectrometer that means all the particles, there will be different kind of particles, photons, charged particles and all others. So the photons which will come out, it will not interact anywhere because there is no medium in between and it will stop here and then it will give you the energy of photons. That time in VECC, I am talking about 1991, there is a lot of theoretical activities led by Dr. Shina on uh, the production of photons at this energy. And so, our first interest was to build this detector. This is called photon spectrometer and this is made of something called lead glass. So, it is a lead and it is a glass and there is some lead element mixed inside that. So, that when photon goes inside, it will stop and give you signal as a scintillating signal and you will detect it. And then we started uh, making this lead plus spectrometer uh, in a lab called CTCRI, which is where you know. And then, uh, unfortunately, we could not get the required performance. That means the lead plus, even if the particle, even if the light is generated, the light is to be transmitted and it has to be detected by the photovoltaic glass, that could not be achieved. So when it could not be achieved, so uh, we kind of stopped, uh, but uh, lead plus did not come. So what came out at that point of time is to build something which is called PMD, which is photon multiplicity detector. That was the first detector that we built in this kind of high energy AVI collisions. So why photon, what does this photon multiplicity detector does, I will explain a little bit more. But the physics motivation behind it is that there will be excess photons if quark lone plasma is formed, that means there is a phase transition, and there will be not excess charged particles if you take the ratio then this ratio will be higher than whatever value in normal nuclear matter. So you measure the photon number and charge particle number and study it. 
So what is the principle of detection of these photons? These photons are all not like any real EV, not like the visible photons, these are all GEV photons. In these GEV photons, if they pass through a medium, it will create uh, pair production that will be E plus E minus. This E plus E minus will again uh, will do brainstorm and that brainstorm will break again and some at the end you will get a sour of E plus and E minus, which is called electromagnetic sour. Now if you allow this medium, which is a lead for example here, to a larger uh, weight, then all these photons will stop and from there you can get the energy. But unfortunately if there is one photo, another photon here, then there will be sour will overlap and you cannot detect one from the other. So the solution which comes out is called pre-shower, that means you don't allow the shower to grow, you just stop the shower here and get the signal. So how you do? You put a converter and let photon pass through and the photon will be detected by a medium uh, which will be like a gas or like a scintillator which will give a signal. So this is for example that medium which will have in small cells. So photon because of the shower will essentially con uh, affect a large number of cells. But the hadrons like pions and others which are charged particles which will not produce electromagnetic shower in this medium, in this depth, they may affect only one cell. So we can differentiate from the energy deposition of hadrons and energy deposition of photons which is much higher compared to the hadrons put a threshold here, these are the photons and these are the hadrons and we can identify photons. This is all the principles that we have in building the photon particle circuit. But what in reality have to consider? Because uh, this is something like uh, we are talking about photon particles in thousands and we are talking something like a medium which may be several hundreds of tons weight. So it cannot be done by one institute or one uh, group. So what happened initially, at the beginning of that era, where there was no experience of building a photon multiple detector or for any detector for high energy physics experiment, there was an attempt to make a collaboration. And these collaborations were VECC, instead of the Bhuvaneshwar mm -hmm. that came later, when Professor Ramurthy joined there, Rajasthani University of Jaipur, University of Jammu, and Punjab University of Jaipur. Now these three institutes, they had a history along with TIFR of working with high energy physics, experimental physics. They used to bring something called emulsion plates. Those emulsion plates used to get exposed in uh, like sulfur, with sulfur beam, with lead beam, in place like CERN or in uh, US like uh, AGS in Brookhaven. And then they essentially explore, look uh, under the microscope those plates and then study the, uh, what is called, uh, multiple scale These institutes joined later and so right now it was 12 of them and then now it is 16 as the uh, latest project goes. This is the first detector that we built. And uh, this is what is my thesis detector basically. So this is W93, here the photon multiplicity detector and this is what where it is ready and we see to CERN. So now see these are all these detecting elements. So the actual detector as I said will have a red plate and then there will be detecting elements. These detecting elements are scintillating pads. If you go to our lab, we can show you. Uh, and those scintillating pads gives you light signals. Those light signals have to be amplified and detected by something called image intensified system. It is like your mobile phone. So in your mobile phone, when light goes, it gets amplified. It's basically that, and it is having pixels or about 1900 in each camera. Now, interestingly, these cameras we did not build it. It was taken from an experiment called EMA2, which is the successor of an experiment called EA1, which got Nobel Prize for discovery of W and J bosons. So essentially, we used those cameras, which were the experiment was dismantled. So we used those cameras and then used in our detectors, as you can show, see here. So this is our simulator pads, and this is what we put some fiber because the light will be carried from here through wavelength shifting fibers, and they will all be put together and then put in this camera. So this camera will give you the image, and as I have shown, if there is a large cluster, then the light will be put on. If it is a small one, then so this is how this principle goes. Now in between, that was in 1991 or around, there was a paper which came uh, by Raja Gopal and Ansley, uh, and that made this photon and charge particle measurement more interesting. In the sense, there was an additional motivation in this direction. What is that? There is a normal vacuum when the particles, when the chiral symmetry is broken and the mass is not the dynamical mass. If in heavy ion collisions, if this spiral symmetry is restored and then it comes back to 
into a normal uh, aqua. Then on the way, it will create some domains, which are called disoriented chiral condensate domains. These domains may orient while breaking in any direction, and that will create something, a uh, fluctuation in photon and charge particles. And that fluctuation, so the ratio of photon to charge particles in, in every collision, is important to understand this phenomena, which is called disoriented chiral condensate. And that is, in, we, it's, it's not that we are motivated to start with that, we are motivated our photon particle detector by knowing, to understand the photon excess, but here there is another motivation that if you see there is a fluctuation in photon to charge particle production, then it may create to something more fundamental, which is the chiral solution breaking or generation of mass. And that led to our another photon vertex detector. We started with something which is for WA93 experiment. So this is the succession, which is WA98 experiment, and again it is in West area, and it is in nine, experiment number 98, and here the distance between these, the target where the particle comes out and the detector is uh, 21.5 meter. Earlier it was like 5 meter. So that means if you collect all these particles which are coming out of that, you have to have a bigger detector. And this detector is like this, as you can see here, your student is somewhere here. And uh, this detector had 55,000 scintillating pads of detection sizes in difference to the one which was 77,600 in the And this is an actual one, and this is a late converter, as you can see. So the particle essentially hits here, gets converted, the scintillator is on the other side, and these are the cameras. This image if you had cameras, and this is the whole setup that we built. And this is the first time that we built something in collaboration with other institutes in the ECC and transported to CERN and took data. So that uh, then uh, this photon multiple detector, uh, again uh, there was an experiment called STAR, uh, this is called solenoid tracker at RIC, relativistic area and collider, where the energy from around 20 GeV in center of mass becomes 200 GeV in center of mass. So that is 10 times more energy. So there will be maybe roughly uh, some factor more photons. So if you want to build them, photon uh, multiple is detected for them. So the decision comes that whether we will be using those scintillator pads which we used earlier or something else. The problem with scintillator pads is that it responds to neutron also. It responds to neutron very effectively. Uh, efficiency is very high. So that means we cannot differentiate whether it's a neutron detection or it's a photon detection. So after a lot of R&D, it was decided to make it gaseous detector, that means it is a gas field detector. And as you have to have small cells, so these cells are like one centimeter square in total. And these are the cells as you can see. And uh, this is what is, uh, every cell has a square in the bottom and in the top. And these are uh, 50 micron tungsten wire connected. And this is the readout electronics board, which will take every signal from this, um, everyone and detect them. So this is the first time that we build something where the electronics was not borrowed from anybody else. Electronics was built by us as well, of course using something called gas flex chip which was uh, available from start. So this is one of the detectors, which is the star detector. Now in star detector, earlier I talked about 7600 then 55000, these are 80,000 cells, but this is of gas proportional chamber. It, it works in the proportional form. Where, uh, where it was, so this is the star is a collider. So beam comes from this direction, this direction hits here. And there are so other detectors here. This is called mid-rapidity region or direct region. And this is the forward rapidity region. That means the beam goes in this direction. And this is where our PMD sits here. here. This is the PMD. And this is what it is actually physical source. This is how the PMD looks like. It could be separated into halves. As you can see here, this is the actual photograph of the magnet, solenoidal magnet in star, and these are the people around, and this is what is our detector. So essentially all the photons which are coming towards you will be detected through this. Of course, when Dr. Sinai is standing there, at that time photon was not coming because beam was off. Uh, it was only to take photograph the visible photon. So then comes another one. So I have talked about three PMDs or three photon multiplicity detector. One is for W93, one is for W98, and then for STAR. Another one now comes ALICE, which is a large hadron collider experiment. And here again, the energy goes from 200 GeV to 5500 GeV. So there is another increase. 
So you have to, if you want to differentiate from one photon through the, to the other, through pre shower, your cell will be really smaller. So it is a factor of four smaller, that is 0.25 cm square instead of one cm square cell. And this is almost at the end of the technology. Because our guys in the lab, they uh, put all these wires together between these two planes and then build those detectors as you can see. And total number of cells was 200,000 here in Alice. And now here, this was the photograph which was taken in Alice. Before, uh, this is the magnet, which is called L3 magnet. This was the earlier experiment where the magnet was borrowed from there. And this magnet, before the, all the experimental uh, detectors were put in inside the magnet, this photograph was taken. So typically these kind of photographs when it's taken and when the data analysis happens, this is the person who does the analysis. And all, all others, they put the detectors and build the array. So this is what is the time scale that we talked about. And this is what is the uh, Alish. And this is how in our lab, the detectors is being built, as you can see, the small, small the holes and the uh, you, there is the gas uh, medium, so gas circulation has to be there. These are the two planes and the detectors are all uh, different steps. This is inside our lab, the uh, different stations, detectors have been, electronics have been tested. And this is a third, before the detectors are transported inside the cupboard, that means uh, 300 feet uh, below. Uh, where the collision will take place. Before that, everything has to be tested with electronics and other. These are the people who are our colleagues from different institutes. It's from Germany University and uh, others from the ECC. And we were testing together. And this is one of the modules which was built. Uh, and this is how the detectors look like. So this is, as you can see, this is the part of the DMD. Again, there are two hubs. This is a huge uh, gas detector called TPC, which is a part of the Alice. Collision happens deep inside there, the particles come out towards you, and this is the photon detector, which is in full form, which like this, in the one half, this is one half, and this is in our lab, uh, which is being inspected, and uh, this is, uh, there are many dignitaries, one of them is our former president, who visited the lab uh, in our, uh, to uh, visit our lab. And this is in its full glory, how PMD looks like, this is the beam pipe, this is one half of PMD, this is another half of PMD, at the end we cover it, with the cover. But this is what all these electronics, they go together and read up. Now this evolution, uh, I want to emphasize a little bit. When I talked about W93, we put together all those scintillator pads and sent them to, to them. And then some uh, colleagues, they took care of everything else, high voltage, low voltage, electronics and everything. Then when you go to uh, W98, it was almost similar. And when you go to STAR, they already built the uh, electronics for us. In Alice, it is complete. It's a complete uh, effort by all of us. It's an evolution in some sense from 7,600 to this. There is another one. So this is one side of the beam pipe. There is another side of the beam pipe in Collider experiment. But there is another detector built uh, in collaboration.